Okra is also called okro and also called lady's fingers. As a child, I used to avoid this vegetable because I found it slimy in soups. But one day, my mom just steamed it and placed a little bit of soy sauce mixed with our version of lemon called calamansi. It was delicious and that got me to appreciate this vegetable with a slimy reputation. So welcome to Journey to Hydroponics. In this video, we shall learn how to grow okra. As a habit, when I germinate seeds, I like to microwave the moist cocoa peat for 3 minutes or you can pour boiling water on the cocoa peat. When the water has cooled down, squeeze out the excess water and fill your seedling container about 2 inches high with cocoa peat. Moisten the cocoa peat with treated water. In treated water for me is tap water which has been kept in an open container for at least a day to remove the chlorine. Then, I dig a hole that's big enough to hold the seeds. Spray the seeds once more with treated water, cover the seeds with cocoa peat, and then spray the cocoa peat once again with treated water. Afterwards, I place a plastic sheet on top of the cocoa peat to help retain the moisture and also added some weights so that the seeds are pressed onto the moist cocoa peat. Then I place the container inside a box so that the seeds germinate in darkness. The start of the seedling began to show on the second day of germination for me. So I removed the plastic sheet and expose the container 1 to 2 inches under my T8 LED grow lights. The goal while watching the seedlings grow is to make sure the cocoa peat remains moist. So I bottom feed the seedlings with treated water every other day in my environment. On day 5, the seedlings were outgrowing their container so I had to transfer them to another. I'm using an 8 ounce cup to hold the seedling. The holes were created using a soldering iron. I filled the cup with cocoa peat, dug a hole in the middle deep enough to hold the okra. Then I watered the cocoa peat with treated water to compact it and moisten it for the roots. I placed the cup on top of a plastic food jar that previously contained peaches and placed it 1 to 2 inches under my grow lights. I did not fill the jar with any nutrient solution but instead kept watering from the top with treated water every other day. On day 10, three or more leaves began to appear and this is the time I filled the jar with nutrient solution. The solution is kept a little above the edge of the cup to ensure that the cocoa peat remains moist for the roots. The nutrient solution I'm using is a brand called Master Blend. The nutrient formula is similar to that which I use to grow basil, but the difference is on the okra, the pH level is kept at 6.3. This is day 16, and you can see the roots have grown quite long so I changed the jar to a larger container. Now this is a 2 liter soda pet container. It's a temporary container and in the next few days you will see why. From day 16, I also place the seedlings outside in my balcony that gets afternoon sun. Although okra loves full sun and warm weather. When the roots are plenty and long, I also made sure that the nutrient solution is filled 1 to 2 inches below the edge of the cup to leave some air gap. So half of the roots are exposed to air while the bottom half of the roots are drinking up the nutrient solution. You can see on day 36 the roots are much more and longer. So this time I transferred the okra to a 6 liter container that previously held distilled water. To hold the cup on a 6 liter container, I used a larger plastic nursery pot 
and place the hole in the center large enough to hold the 8 ounce cup. Then I cover the sides with coco peat. If you don't have a plastic nursery pot, another alternative is to use a microwave container like this which I place the hole in the center that's big enough to hold the 8 ounce cup. I used a marking pen to help gauge the level of the solution. This mark will help me level the solution when I need to refill it and ensures the plant maintains an air gap for the top half of the roots while the bottom half will be used to drink the solution. And of course, you will need to cover the container once again with aluminum foil to prevent the algae from growing inside. Check every other day that there is enough nutrient solution for the roots. Refill the solution when necessary, always ensuring that the roots are moist. On day 47, I decided to place a stake on each plant for support during those windy days. On day 49, the flower buds began to appear. On day 51, I also pruned the lower leaves so that the energy of the plant can concentrate in developing the flower buds. On day 52, the flower begins to open. On day 53, the flower has fully opened. I find that the flowers of the okra are very pretty, but you will only have a day to appreciate them. The petals wither and fall the next day. But the good news is that you will see the start of the baby okra. The surprising thing is that the baby okra will grow about an inch every day. This is day 59 of the okra and it is now around 4 inches long. So it's time to harvest. If you wait longer, the okra is not as soft and will be hard and tough to eat. Also, when you harvest, it will encourage the plant to produce more okras. Enjoy your okra by steaming it for 5 minutes and adding your favorite condiments like soy sauce with lemon on the side, or how about steamed okra with oyster sauce, or even with garlic. At 100 grams, okra is loaded with nutrients. If you live in a warm area like I do, the okra can be a perennial plant. This means that the plant will continuously grow and produce okra. So there you have it. Thank you for watching this video on growing hydroponic okras. Till our next video, bye-bye.